Pascal's triangle, um, we're still in 12.2 combinations, but now we're basically centering in on the binomial theorem. And basically, if you remember back in um, chapter 6, we went over some formulas on how to basically uh, distribute and pull things out that were incredibly large. Um, and we had the cubes one, uh, which we were talking about. Well, that was this row right here, which we'll get to what that means in a minute. That was this row. But if you want to write this down, this is Pascal's triangle. And this is how Pascal created his triangle by using the uh, combinations. Um, this is how each of these items um, was developed. Um, this is Pascal's triangle, which you're eventually going to be using. Um, and Pascal's triangle can keep going forever and ever and ever. This doesn't just end right here. Um, this is if you have um, something squared. This is if you have something um, to the third power. This is if you have something to the fourth power. This is if you have something to the fifth. Obviously, we could have something to the 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th power. But um, this will help you solve these problems um, when we get to them um, a little later. So keep that in mind. The binomial theorem is here. Um, it's written out. It's really long and tedious and time-consuming. Uh, but there's a binomial theorem. I want you to write it down so you can see, um, so you have it in your notes. It's going to be very confusing to you, but when I go over examples um, in class here, when we start going over them, the binomial theorem will be much more simpler and make much more sense um, to you than this will the time being um, right now. When I say to expand that, that means you're going to look at your triangle on your fourth row there, and that fourth row is the 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 row. And that's the row, that's the, the coefficient that you're going to put on the outside. Um, when you're doing these problems, what I want you to keep in mind is um, this, and I'm going to show you in a second here. Um, this is the 1, the 4, the 6, the 4, and the 1 row. Okay. Then, here's what I did. Um, you take the first term and you start at the highest exponent. So that's why it's x to the fourth. Then you go down the whole way, x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x to the first, and then there is no x. Okay. Then you take whatever the second term is, which is a 2, and you start by taking that to the 0, which is why I have 2 to the 0, then 2 to the 1, then 2 to the 2, then 2 to the 3, then 2 to the 4. That's where all those items are coming from. So when you're doing this, just so you understand where everything's coming from. Notice how it goes 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 with the first term. And the second term it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's where we're getting these numbers from. 2 to the 4th is 16. x to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 3rd is 8. x to the 1 is x. 2 squared is 4. x squared is x squared. 2 to the 1st is 2. x cubed is x cubed. 2 to the 0 is 1. x to the 4th is x to the 4th these numbers out in front, that's why you use Pascal's triangle. So you don't have to use this combination crap to find anything. It's just 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, if you remember the triangle. So all you do is combine all your like terms to get the answer. 1 times 1 times x to the 4th is x to the 4th. 4 times 2 is 8x cubed. 6 times 4 is 24x squared. 4 times 8 is 32x. 16 times 1 times 1 is 16. Even something like this, you can use it with, okay? And because it is to the third, this is why I'm using the third row. One, three, three, one row. You take the first term and you go the whole way down, starting at the highest exponent, which is cubed. So it's u cubed, u squared, u to the first power, u to the zero. That's why I have u cubed, u squared, u to the zero, or u to the one, and u to zero. You take the whole second term, and the whole second term is a v squared. So the whole second term is v squared to the 0, v squared to the 1, v squared squared, v squared to the 3rd. And once again, keep in mind, you see how the first term goes down, 3, 2, 1, and 0. The second term, v squared, goes up from 0, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Do you see that? So. What we have here is, remember, it's 1, 3, 3, 1. 
the u's are all there except u to the zero turned into a one and then you have to distribute this through so v squared to the third is v to the sixth v squared squared is v to the fourth v squared to the first power is v squared and anything to the zero is one so one times one times the u cubed is u cubed three times all that is three times all that three times all that is three times all that and one times one times v to the sixth is v to the sixth power and we're going to skip over that and here's another one for you to expand once again looking at the uh, fourth row because it is to the fourth which means it's one four six four one because that's your row of Pascal's triangle the first term is a 5, so notice how it is 5 to the 4th, then 5 cubed, then 5 squared, then 5 to the 1st power, then 5 to the 0. The second whole term is negative 2a, so that's why it's negative 2a to the 0, negative 2a to the 1, negative 2a squared, negative 2a to the 3rd, negative 2a to the 4th. Remember, the first term goes down, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. The second term goes up, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So when we do this, 5 to the 4th is 625, and anything to the 0 is 1. 5 to the 3rd is 125, and all that to the 1 power is negative 2a. 5 squared is 25, negative 2a squared is 4a squared. 5, that is negative 8a cubed. 5 to the 0 is 1, and take that 4 through to both, you get 16a to the 4th. So you combine all your like terms to get 1 times... 625 times 1 is 625. 4 times 125 times negative 2a is negative 1000a. 6 times 4 times 25 is 600a squared. 4 times 5 times negative 8 is negative 160a cubed. 1 times 1 times 16 is 16. And there's your answer. Um, we're not going to worry about finding the coefficient here of the items. We're, we're not going to worry about that. So let's just kind of breeze through that problem quick and there is your homework so um, like I said the binomial theorem can be tricky and we will be going over that with examples a little better and you can see as I plug them in in order what everything looks like so it was a little more challenging on this um, notes but when I go over some more examples in class it will make more sense to you and I will put those examples also online here for you so you can see them as well. If you have any other questions or concerns, please email me and please let me know. Thank you.